Let's talk about courage and hope. The courage to act when faced with challenges and the hope that such courage creates. This is what Right Livelihood Laureates do every day. This interview presents one of the four 2022 Right Livelihood Laureates and their fight for a better future for all. Let them inspire you. Hope is what we create when we take action together. Welcome to this interview series with the 2022 Right Livelihood Laureates. In these 30-minute conversations, we will explore their work and methods and learn more about the motivation behind their commitment. This is How to Mobilize Change, The Courage to Act. It is my great honor to be joined by Gustavo Salas, associated with 2022 Right Livelihood Laureate, Seco Sesola. There we go. What is Seco Sesola? Well, it's many things. <laughs> In the concrete aspect, we are a, a network of 50 or 52 cooperatives that we integrate in Seco Sesola. Seco Sesola has its, our own activities, but also all these cooperatives have their own activity. And we try to function as a family, in the sense that we don't have any uh, hierarchical structure. We don't have board of directors, we don't have a difference in income. We rotate our activities, no matter that we all do everything. It's a very different way to do things. That's the main thing about the Cogesola. And doing those things, that process, that educational process of doing the things different, is very motivational, it creates a lot of identity, and we've been developed with very big services. It was always 55 years. So we have uh, 30, fo 30 food markets in our city. We attend 40% of the population. We provide food for 40% of the population of Barquisimeto. There's more than a million ha uh, citizens. And uh, we have uh, seven centers in the, in the poor sectors. Uh, it's a consulting center, medical centers. And we have a hospital. We have constructed with our own recourses without being, asking money from anybody. In the hospital, we, have, we make more than 1,500 uh, surgeries a year. We have a complete service. And we have a funeral, a funeral service was our start. And in our uh, health system, we attend more than 250,000 patients a year. We, all our activities started very small, very humble, and we, through our educational process, to the process of reflecting together, without any boss to tell us what we have to do, without no hierarchy, we have been developed these activities through the years. Some Jewish priests promoted the recovery movement in the poorest sector. That's very special because usually cooperatives are middle class. Here it was the poorest, the poorest sector with asking, without asking money from anybody. The poor people got integrated and created their own saving and loan, uh, loan cooperatives. But there was a lot of enthusiasm, more mystic. The people were very happy with what they were doing. And four years later, they decided to create their own central or integrating organism, the Seco Sesola, to to fight against a very, very important need in the poor people is the funeral service. In the poor sector, when somebody dies, you don't have the money to bury your family. And that was our first activity. Ten cooperatives got together and found the Secosesola. Initially, we were a typical a conventional cooperative where we had a board of director, like any other cooperative. We had a manager, we had employees. But with time, we have been changing that to have what we have today that some people have to see it to believe it because we, we do our things very different than any, any enterprise. 
How did you take this traditional hierarchical organization and make it flat? It was very, uh, very romantic. Then we said, we, we entered the transportation of the city. We bought 130 buses. We, we are a son, we had 300 employees. And we, they were in the board of directors at that time. There was a board of directors who said, in this group, we're going to have experience. And that experience to work without a boss. And we were very idealistic. We thought it was a lot easier that people would be responsible because they, now they had a better salary, they had better everything. They could give their opinion, they could decide. But not everybody saw it as that. And at the beginning, it was a very chaotic. It was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite a mess. But slowly, we were learning. We were learning what you have to do to make this work. We went through very difficult moments. And that taught us a lot. But the main thing is we're always reflecting on anything that happens, be it a good thing, be it a bad thing, be it a conflict. Everything that happens, we convert it in an educational process. How does it work when there are disagreements within Secosesola about what to do or how best to do it? If a general manager comes and sees us, they say, they're saying we're wasting our time. We meet in big meetings, 10, 12, 100, 150 people. Every space where there is an activity, we have a meeting, weekly meeting, of all the workers. And together, we have many meetings of all the cooperatives together. In all those meetings, we talk and we reach agreements without voting. We have more than 40 years that we have never voted in Secosa Sola. We eliminated the vote. It's by consensus. It's not unanimous. We don't ask anybody. Those who agree, lift their hands. No. We, 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 reach an, we seem to reach an agreement. If nobody says that they're not, they don't agree with it, that's the agreement. But it, afterwards, somebody doesn't agree with it, we discuss it again. Any decision can be reverted. Any decision can be analyzed uh, at any time. Obviously, you're, you've taken on a lot of services you know, a lot of new enterprises. How do you decide that Seco Cecilia should expand its services? The activities emerge from the necessity. That's another thing we do different. No? We're not, we don't plan activities. It's, it's, things come up and if it's a real necessity and if that activity allows us to pro, go more profound in our educational process, that's our priority, the educational process, we'll do it. But for us, it's very important that our educational process is not only for us, the workers. It's for anybody that comes in contact with us. So we like activities that resolve basic needs because people like to participate, like the health service, the, service, the funeral service, and the market. We involve the people that come to our service to participate also. It's open to them. We, we, we don't have any secret. We don't have, we, we don't have any... And say that and when we when we happen something that we might be shamed that happens that sometimes things happen we we say that we see it as positive because that teaches us and we we share that experience with everybody because we're learning from them if somebody for instance uh, breached their trust and, and stole in one of our stores that is um, that's just reflected in all our meetings in all the spaces, <laughs> and we learn from that. And we learn how that breaks our trust and how it's not something that is constructive for what we're doing. And in the same way, when people come to our service and they have, give opinions, that goes to our meeting also. If they don't like the way we serve them, if they want to change, that always discusses. We're always talking, not only in meetings, but in permanent conversations. So it's always a permanent conversation with anybody that wants to talk with us. <laughs> Do you think that being a member of Seco Sesola changes the way that people interact with each other? We, ch we are permanently changing. I, I was much different when I came to Seco Sesola. I was, uh, <laughs> initially, we acted very, very conventional, confronting the state and making mobilization and being jailed. and. Uh, uh, I passed through that period, Secoesola had that period, and then we reflected that that was contradictory with what we're doing internally. And then we want to be 
in one process of constructing trustful relationship with anybody, with the politicians, with anybody they will come in contact. Our role is to, our educational process is constructing trust. What are the challenges facing Venezuela today and how are they different from what the challenges when Seco Sesolo was founded? Well, <laughs> very, very different. We've gone with this last uh, seven years, we've gone through a very difficult situation. We had about five years of uh, scarcity. You couldn't find food, you couldn't find medicine. And uh, there was a lot of corruption. You know? Uh, the, you could find the food or the medicine, but sold three or four times its price. It's a black market. And in Seco de Sola, we, we had uh, the compromise or the commitment to, uh, to guarantee that what we receive in food, we might receive uh, tons of uh, arena or uh, flour with tons of uh, uh, pasta. We, re we, receive, we, we move much merchandise. Right? But we will distribute it, uh, uh, what we receive, we will distribute it according to the people we know that come to the food fair, including ourselves, who work in Seco de Sola. If the food that we lasted for one kilo of pasta, well, we also will buy one kilo of pasta. Well, 100,000 people came to our market. In our biggest market, there might be, in one day, 16,000 people. We would have 100 cashiers in one market. In the whole system, we had more than 300 cashiers at that time. And we'll attend everybody until the latest hour of the night. The people were in the queue. In the morning, when we opened, there were 6,000 people out there that slept outside. And they keep coming all day. One day, we had 5,000 people outside. It was 7 o'clock. It was dark. And we had the food there. We were guaranteeing that everybody would get their piece of pasta or flour or whatever it is. And, uh, well, we lasted at 11 o'clock at night. Now, imagine a cashier working at 6 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, a 20-minute break for lunch, 20-minute break for dinner. And at the end, we were very happy. We applauded. We were <laughs> because we because we are, and, and that type of action it makes the community very committed with us. We're back there. They protect us. They're very, very important. At one time, electricity, electricity went out for five days. Supermarkets closed their doors because there was no money. There was no cash. Mm -hmm. There were no dollars at that time. There was no very solid cash either. A few people have. They, they were afraid that they would be looted. What do, we always open our doors. Anything happens, we open our doors. The few people that had cash would buy. Sometimes we, the information came that in that block, uh, a mile away, there was a signal for the electronic devices. So we would go with the people in a bus and <laughs> we'll pass the electronic uh, car. No? Or sometimes there was so much trust in us that people would give them their uh, cars to us. And we would go alone and we charge them what they had to be charging. We found the signal somewhere. <laughs> so, so that type of activity creates thorough. So, so at, the end, at the end, we had the vessel. So the supermarket closed and they lost the vessel. We loaned it. We loaned 100 tons of vessel. And, uh, and, and the majority paid. In three months, 80% have paid the, the vessel they took. And the, in those five days, the only place where they could find food in Barquisimeto was in Seco Sola, in our food fair. We know that people and the politicians know that we have a, we have a very important uh, backing in the community, but we don't use that against anybody. The politicians saw us as enemy. And at the time, they jailed us. They took away our bosses. And, and we learned a lot about that confrontation. You know? So we're in the process of finding ways to relate. So at that time, the government was uh, in, ter in political terms, maybe from the right, more from the right. And uh, they accused us of being communists, of being uh, a fascist. And they said everything about us. 
they were stealing money. We had uh, banks in Switzerland, and, and our tariff was one fourth the tariff than in Caracas. But but it's amazing what the politicians, when they're afraid that they, you have a power and, you, and they're going to lose your job with you, they they do very terrible things. Huh? So with this government, we were prepared. And with this government, we maintain our neutrality. But at the beginning, this was a government that was very sectarian. That if you're with me, if you're not with me, you're against me. You know? So we had to spend very many years that they, they didn't want anything with us. But they didn't touch us either because we're very respectful. We tried to open dialogue with the members of the government. And slowly, 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 one of the reasons we, we wanted to get this prize is that that, that, that is helpful for the government. But anyway, about five years ago, things have started to uh, improve a little bit. At least we have a few members of the government, a high level, that respect us. They, uh, they understand what we're doing. They tell us that that's what they wanted to do. But, and they ask us to train their communas, uh, the communes, to train the members of the community, and we don't have any problem. We, we're open to anybody who wants to know our experience and learn from us. They, they can come from the right, from the left, from any sector. We are completely open because in our cooperative, we have people of all the political tendencies. Do you think that everyone has the capacity to uh, to be part of a cooperative, or are there? Is it something that you have to be a particular sort of person to be attracted to and succeed with? People move on the basis of emotions, of desires, huh? and it's important that you have the desire to live in a cooperative relation. But you can find them and find that anywhere. There are some cultures that are more induced to this type of uh, behavior, some less. But in the case of, of our city, we have uh, a lot of uh, custom of solidarity, of mutual help. That's very inside our culture. And, uh, and that helps. That helps. In our process, we insist a lot in responsibility. And, and that has been key. At first, we didn't know. We said the people, we, at the beginning, we thought the people would be responsible, they would behave. They, but in, uh, with time, we, we have insisted. So, although we don't have any boss, we don't have any supervisor, we all can make decisions. We, have, we don't have to wait for the meeting to make a decision. If I make a decision that, that, that was individualistic, that it wasn't according to the, what we, have, we would have decided in a meeting or with the collective criteria, I have to assume the consequence of the, the decision. And I have to give back that money that we lost. Of course, not from your pocket, not from your daily income, but we have a very natural way to do it. We embed activities. We call it, let's make an activity to recover that money. What, what we always say that, in English, I break this glass, but in Spanish, the glass broke itself. <laughs> That's Spanish inheritance. Um, two months ago, prices went up one week. Initially, 40%, because uh, the price of the dollar in the black market, went went up 40%, and the supermarket immediately raised their prices 40%. And we said, no, we're the community. The, the population is 40% poorer in five days. It's become 40% poorer. We can't, we can't do that to the community. So we raised a few prices, very small. And that week, we lost $6,000. But at one time, we lost $7 million and we recovered. <laughs> So it was six houses a million. And it took us about two months. And now we broke even after two months. We're breaking even right now. But we, we always take into account the community because we, we are the community. We're part of it. We're not something, we're our enterprises apart from the community. Well, that, that's the type of thing that we do different. <laughs> but some people don't, don't believe it's true. <laughs> they have to see to believe. But we, we are very open to anybody who wants to come. What inspires you? Well, at first I was very traditional. I was educated in the United States. Uh, my motivation is yeah, initially it was that uh, I, I didn't want to continue working in the business. I, I was a general manager. I worked in business until I was 30. 
And that didn't feel me. I, I want to go to the poor sector and see how I could help. Uh, afterwards, I had to change a lot because I was very concrete. I, to understand this, this process of transformation, culture transformation, I was an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> so I, it, it was very difficult. This Colombian guy we met at the beginning, he, he helped us a lot. He was an anthropologist. And he helped us a lot to understand what is culture, what is cultural change, what is transformation, and, and that it had to begin with you. You are the first one who has to change. If you're not willing to change, forget it. You're not going to change anybody. Any, everybody has to change by himself. You just have to give them the opportunity, and that's what we do. We give you the opportunity to change, but if you don't, well, you take it or, or leave it. And uh, so I, that change was part of my, my personal change. But my experience, I am every, every time more committed. What lessons have you learned from cooperatives in other countries or elsewhere? The, the thing is that the cooperatives in most countries are very similar how Sekoda Sola was at first. And at times we think maybe we're not a cooperative, maybe we're something else. And we see ourselves more like a process, we're a process. <laughs> a process of social change, a process of, of cultural transformation. We, at times we say we, we, we don't see ourselves as an organization right now. It's just a process that we're constructing with everybody. So we're very different. Every, every time that passes, we, we become more different. And, and the young people that come to Secoesola, the young workers, associates, when they go to a, a conventional cooperative, and that's not a cooperative. Look, they have board of director. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, we started being a cooperative. Now we don't know what we are, but we're in that road of discovering what we are. What do you see as the kind of next challenges that will be that the organization will be facing, or? that, that Seco Sesola will be facing? The biggest challenge is the educational process. If we care for that, if we're after that, if we continue taking advantage of anything that happens, being good or bad and converted in an educational process, that's the key. That's the key. And now we have, uh, well, 1,300 workers, but we have many persons that have been 20, 30 years, 40 years with us. And they might be 32, 40 years old. So there's a, the new generation is very well formed. How does this flat organization work with more specialized skills? Yeah, well, it's been a challenge because doctors are very hierarchical. They tend to think they are the owners, they're close to God, and <laughs> they're, they're untouchable. And it's been a slow process, but they're, they're, work, they're getting in integrated. At first, it's hard to get them to go to our meetings. But slowly, we're, but slowly, some doctors are cooking, some doctors are cleaning, some doctors go to the food fair and they're cashiers. We're slowly integrating, the, the, and uh, we have a lot of experience with that. But they, they earn uh, a percentage of what they charge. Uh, a doctor that sees any patient, a specialized doctor in Venezuela, in our city, charges at least $50. We charge ten dollars, and the doctor gets four dollars only for each patient he sees. But he sees many patients, many patients. But the nurses, they are, they earn the same as any of us. They have the the commitment to go to the food fair at least one day in the week and be cashiers or sweep the floor. They are they are not nurses only, and those that are not nurses are learning to be nurses. Do you think that there is? It as the kind of political and economic crisis continues in Venezuela, is does does that put more strain on, on Seco Sesola, or do you think that you've been made stronger? We've been made stronger. We've we've gone through very difficult moments, including when there were riots, when there were uh, bombs and everything. Half a block where we're full fair, we always maintain our full fairs open. Uh, our criteria was we're the community, and the community is not is going to protect us. And many times uh, we have been, and well, when there, there was a scarcity problem, when there was 
They, they've been very difficult times, but we make those difficult times in an educational process, we reflect about it, and that we end up stronger. This one, an economist, famous economist from Chile, once said to us, I, I agree with everything in Secoesola. What I, I don't agree with Secoesola is that you're irrelevant about the economic, economics. You, you don't, you're not serious about economy. But we are. We, we take care of our economic situation daily, every week. All the members of the food fair and the health service, we get the information how much we sell, what we lose, what is our liquidity. Every information is shared in all the meetings in the morning and the afternoon in all space. All of us have the information. So we're, we know every week how we spend that week. No, no enterprise has that information. Maybe the general manager, but here in this case, everybody has it. So, so that gives us a guarantee that we're, we can solve any problem that comes up. What is in kind of a, a realistic but still kind of positive hope that you have for the coming year? Well, my, my hope is that the process is, is going to be much profound. <laughs> but activities, I don't think of activities. We have some activities, small activities, where we're, uh, we're in, in, uh, making an installation of a solar system, very small, with... Um, Foundation, uh, Rosa Rosenberg Foundation. We're making a, a first experiment with solar energy. But it, and it's very brave because in Venezuela, electricity is very cheap. We're not saving any money. We're just doing it because we, we want to save the planet. And, uh, and we, are, we, about two years ago, we started the activity of natural birth. And that has gone, been, in Venezuela, 90% of women don't give natural births. So we're working against, current against that. But uh, any, any activity that comes, that emerges, uh, responding to necessity, collective necessity, we'll, we'll see if they, we, we didn't plan the food fair. We just took the buses and took the seeds and put some vegetables and went out to sell, sell food in the city. We didn't, that was not planned. And, and the first year, we had no idea how we were going to pay that debt of $7 million. But at the end, with the food fair, we paid the debt. And we built our hospital center, worth $3 million, with the food fair and collaboration of the people, everybody. So we are confident that whatever comes up, and it's with our criteria, it's going to... But we don't plan activities.